In this lesson, I want to look at reliability and predictability. Very similar, but they do have some different considerations and attributes when we really look at what's involved in those. So if I think about reliability, if I think of Azure as a cloud platform, problems will still happen. There are still servers behind the scenes and disks behind the scenes. And so a node can fail, a rack can fail. But when I think about the healing of the cloud, it will automatically do certain automatic healing. So I can think about, well, if a node had a problem, if a rack had a problem, my VM, for example, would get redeployed automatically to another node, to another rack within that region or availability zone, whatever it was, was the unit of my deployment. If I think of storage services, they automatically have replicas of the data. For example, if I think about just regular Azure storage account, at minimum, there's always three copies of my data. Now maybe that's three copies spread over different racks in a storage cluster. Maybe it's spread over three availability zones. Maybe additionally, there's then an async replica to another region. If I'm using a database service, well, that sits on top of this storage and then may have its own replication of logs, for example, that then get replayed into some copy of that. So we have various levels of reliability from problems happening at node and disk levels. I can also think about reliability of my service and being able to respond to changes in load. So we often think of things like auto scale, the ability to add additional instances of my service as the load increases so I can meet that load and maintain a level of performance that the users of that service expect but also then decrease the number of nodes as that load drops to optimize my spend. So it's ensuring I have the capacity available to meet the load without wasting capacity. Azure services have a certain SLA. We can go and look at the service level agreement of each service. And so when I think about, well, reliability, that's the financially backed commitment from Azure for that service. Now, if my service is comprised of multiple different services, then I get a composite SLA. And that's gonna maybe be higher or lower depending on if I need all of the services present or is it an or relationship so it actually increases my SLA. Now, one of the key things when I think about reliability is I do have to think about design for failure. And what does that mean? Well, I have to consider that, hey, there's fantastic resilience features built into Azure at a data center level, but something could still happen at a regional level. So what I think about, designed for failure means multi-region. My service maybe is active-active over multiple regions. Maybe it's active-passive. Maybe it's active with a backup going to another region. My choice will depend on well, how much data I can afford to lose, my recovery point objective, and how long I have to get up and running again, my recovery time objective. But I have to design for that. Now also realize I have to monitor because Azure may be fine, but my application has a problem. So I think about using Azure Monitor, Application Insights, and then creating alerts and maybe then action groups to automatically do something if there is an actual problem. And then the other side of this, remember, is the idea, predict, <laughs> predict ability. Now, in Azure, one of the great things we have is we have very defined SKUs. I have VM SKUs, storage SKUs, and they have certain sizes, and with that comes very specific performance characteristics. If it's a VM, for example, I get a certain ACU, an Azure Compute Unit, that tells me the amount of processor performance I'm gonna get. 
I get a certain amount of memory. There's a certain IOPS limit for storage. There's a certain throughput limit for storage. There's a certain amount of network throughput I get assigned. I get a certain number of vehicles based on the skew and the size. So we get very specific dimensions of, hey, what is the, for example, performance we're going to get? I also get predictability in the form of behavior. So I can think about, I have these very specific ways I can interact. I have the ideas of different APIs. I have certain tools. I can use a template. I get predictable pricing based on the region. So it, there's a lot of predictability about this. Now, some of this reliability comes into that predictability aspect, but we have to be predictable as well. So what that means is in our interactions, well, I wanna use templates when I do deployments. This could be a JSON template, it could be a bicep file, it could be a Terraform file, but I wanna use that declarative nature to deploy what I want. I don't wanna be clicking buttons. I want predictability. I wanna make sure things always deploy the same way. The same for other types of actions. I wanna use automation. Maybe that's automation responding to certain types of events. Maybe that's automation through PowerShell or the Azure CLI to perform maintenance activities. I might use things like DevOps. So when I think about my application, I have um, those pipelines. I might have continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, but it's done in a very structured fashion that's not gonna vary depending on who's clicking whatever buttons I have. So as much as possible, really the key thing here is this idea of automation. Take out humans clicking buttons and really drive that predictability. Azure as a platform gives you predictability. My behaviors on top of it, make sure I continue that and encourage that much easier way to maintain the environment.